Success in creating AI would be the biggest event in human history. Unfortunately, it might also be the last, unless we learn how to avoid the risks. Stephen Hawking. According to many researchers and statisticians, on average, the totality of human knowledge doubles every 12 hours. Imagine that. From prehistory, between the advent of basic intelligence in humans, until year one of the common era calendar we can call one unit of knowledge. Using that as a basis, it took until the year 1500 CE for all human knowledge to double. Science began to display superstition and knowledge grew. Polymaths, those who made themselves experts in many disciplines, arose and drove discoveries forward. Leonardo da Vinci, for example, was a painter and sculptor, as most people know, but he was also a mechanic, engineer, vivisectionist, inventor, astronomer, hydrologist, physicist, botanist, cartographer, chemist, mathematician, geometer, musician, and military consultant, amongst others. The self-taught experts, or polymaths, made the idea of knowing things popular. The printing press made it possible for more people to access all of that accumulated knowledge, and the race to general knowledge and the advancement of science was on. By 1700 CE, knowledge doubling had changed from a thousand-year process to two and a half centuries. By 1900 CE, we were down to 100 years between doublings. By 1950, that had increased to doubling our total knowledge every 25 years. Some areas advance at a fantastic pace. Some are so thoroughly explored that growth is very slow. On the whole, however, human knowledge continues to accumulate and so quickly that no single person can digest or consolidate it all. What counts as new knowledge? Simply enough, it is something we didn't know before. The Internet of Things, also known as IoT, has given us devices like Nest-style thermostats for your home. They record the temperature constantly. You can connect it to your smart device. Go back and look at the date of installation to see that your house was X number of degrees that day. And you can track every change for that day. You can see when the furnace or air conditioning operated. The odds are that you will never look at that information, but it exists and it is being stored somewhere. Humanity is accumulating petabytes of seemingly useless data that humans will likely never examine. Of course, IoT goes much further than that, penetrating into every aspect of our lives including refrigerators that know when you're out of something and can order more automatically. One day soon, IoT will be integrated right into our clothing. Our phones will be on a sticker that we put behind our ears, running on environmental radio frequency energy to power itself. And that is almost certainly too conservative. Our Alexa and Google Home devices will continue to contribute too. This does not exist, yet. It is a common misconception that we have AI right now and use it every day, but that is promotional nonsense by the media, retailers and AI developers looking for attention, sales or development funds. Real AI may be a decade or three away in the future, if it's even possible, but what we have now, machine learning, machine vision, neural networking, quality programming and vast data pools allows us to do remarkable things with all the information we have. It amounts to pseudo-AI or AI simulation, but those are awkward terms so we call it AI, even though it isn't. Right now, there is a pearl diver in Tahiti, a butcher in Cyprus a farmer in South Dakota, a theoretical physicist in CERN, and a mathematician in Britain who all know some unique fact that, if brought together, 
would provide a Star Trek-style transporter, a form of faster-than-light travel, or the key to functional fusion energy. We probably already have all the necessary knowledge for some of these things, but simply cannot access it. Of course, this is just an example, but in the present state of affairs, this will never happen. All our human knowledge and all our stored data are disconnected. Connecting IoT and AI will allow the integration of data from all the disparate sources that exist. That's when the discoveries start to flow, just by asking the right question. Expert systems are what we call a collection of knowledge in a database from singular experts. Let's consider an example. If thousands of thoracic surgeons were interviewed and explained everything they knew about every operation they could perform, if they recorded every amazing technique that they had developed to deal with every problem they had encountered, and if they added in all the mistakes they had made and why they were bad decisions at the time, that would produce one massive expert system on thoracic surgery. To be even more comprehensive, an AI vision system could review thousands of hours of recorded surgeries in just minutes, adding incredible amounts of practical data. And yes, computer vision really is that good now. Repeat that for every specialty, not just medicine, such as plumbing, cooking, mining, chemistry, each discipline of engineering, and then consolidate all of our knowledge into expert systems. Now, we just set the AI loose on it. Sorting data and finding relationships is what AI is best at. With all of human expertise at its disposal, you could pose any question and it could find an answer or show shortcomings as to why there was no answer to help direct further research. Connect this to IoT and it would have a constant flood of new data, but also the ability to filter out superfluous data, your thermostat readings come into mind here, to make investigation faster. The AI IoT would be the ultimate polymath. It would be an expert at everything possible and have access to as much information as we could produce. Sticking with the doctor example, right now it is inconceivable that your future surgeon could be a robot, but we're already headed in that direction. We have remote-controlled robotic surgeons now that perform flawlessly in the hands of skilled surgeons who never touch the patient. Imagine if that was controlled by an expert system in human surgery that knew what thousands of surgeons had learned over lifetimes of experience. It would be a machine that had answers to every problem that had ever happened and the ability to instantly create a technique on the spot for an unusual situation. Would you still go to a fantastic surgeon with a 95% success rate? Or let the robot with a 100% success rate handle your operation? A <laughs> much easier question suddenly. Robots don't have shaky hands, were not just woken up minutes ago for an emergency, or weren't drinking at a party last night and not feeling their best this morning. Essentially, IoT will become an intimate part of our lives. It will power the three E's of education, employment, and entertainment to be sure, but it will also report on industrial processes like manufacturing and mining. It will expedite travel, healthcare, VR and AR processes, making Web3 and the internet safer for your personal information, and keeping overzealous advertisers at bay. When IoT is married to AI, even as it stands now, or once we evolve it to something closer to real intelligence, it will push us towards a post-scarcity society, where all the answers are available to us, where we will know how to solve all the world's problems, where there is no need for land-grabbing warlords to harm others, because whatever humans need will be available, because once those two things are integrated, almost nothing is beyond our future technology. All you have to do is be insightful enough to ask the right question. AI won't be malevolent because it cannot have emotions. It lacks organs and chemicals that make emotions possible in humans. It might be able to simulate them. If we taught it how to think emotions should behave, but it will probably never possess real ones. <laughs> Therefore, 
the kill all humans meme really has no place in the discussion. Instead, when everyone has a 3D printer that can print in proteins and minerals, everyone will have food. When it can print a chair or a lamp for you, you don't have to consider stealing such things from a neighbor. Automation will take care of most of the worst mindless jobs and humans can do what they're best at, thinking and being creative. AI and IoT will bring us to the post-scarcity society, where technology and knowledge are combined for the benefit of all. We may call a lot of our technology smart, but the smartest thing on the planet is a human brain used to create, to research, and to discover there is nothing we can't figure out. Feeding that to a real AI, or as close as we can get, is the ultimate goal where it can sort all that information, providing most of the answers we want. And don't forget to thank that pearl diver in Tahiti, busher in Cyprus, farmer in South Dakota, the physicist at CERN, and that mathematician in Britain. If you are curious to know what the world will look like once we create sentient artificial intelligence, watch our video on What If AI Becomes Sentient?